Our session is about to begin in 10 minutes. Please get comfy in your couches as we get ready for an afternoon of learning and insights from the industry's leading experts. We would like to thank our official partners for making this event initiative possible. E-Learning Partner O-Learn Geyser Maklang Analytics, Data, Advertising Esquire Financing Fueling Dreams Hey Maya Angkas PMCM Events Management Tony Bilan, The Total Host Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mai Sandico, and I am joined today by my good-looking co-host, Tony Bilaro. We will be your moderator for Zomato Philippines' first ever digital event. Hi, Tony. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Miss Mai, and uh, you look stunning as well. Happy ECFU, as they say. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, before we start the program uh, or the, uh, the program, we would also like to encourage all our viewers to post about the event using our official hashtag. So please take note of this one. It's hashtag Zomaro PH, hashtag quarantine PH, hashtag quarantine 2020, and hashtag Zoma Talks. All right. And to officially kick off this digital session, here to give us an introduction is Mr. Chris Evans, the business head for Zomato Philippines. Hi, Chris. Good afternoon, Mice and Tony. How are you? Thank you for that. And uh, good, afternoon. good afternoon to everyone watching, uh, owners, operators, marketing professionals, and, and decision makers from the F&B industry. We're glad to have you here today. Uh, we hope that you are all self 
uh, safe and well. Uh, the past seven or eight weeks have been nothing but challenging and surprising to the world. I'm sure you've all heard it before, uh, but certainly unprecedented times. Uh, that has been something that has been a, a global thing, not just here in the Philippines. Uh, almost every industry and business uh, coming up with various alternatives to survive uh, during these uh, seemingly uh, economic blows. Uh, we are one of those as well, uh, and I think particularly the F&B industry and travel industries have been some of the hardest hit. With that in mind, Zomato Philippines decided to come together and are very proud to present uh, this three-day digital event with you all, quarantine supporting the food industry in a time of crisis. Uh, we'll be tackling various ways to keep the business afloat during the COVID pandemic. Uh, I know there's been many uh, uh, sort of webinars where restaurateurs have had an opportunity to discuss, and we've been uh, avid participants and, and viewers of such webinars. What we wanted to do is actually bring some experts together from various industries uh, to create this three-day event. Uh, today, we'll be talking restaurant branding. On Wednesday, we'll be talking uh, financials and then moving into technology of a post-COVID era on Friday. Today, uh, we're excited to have Amor McClang and uh, Brad Geyser of Geyser McClang and Jason Cruz of ADA Asia, who will come on board and give us some insights into how you can brand your restaurant, not just during this time, uh, but more importantly, into the future. Uh, why are we doing this? I guess Zomato creates a cutting edge technology to connect restaurant businesses and customers in a way that aims to revolutionize the restaurant industry. Given the drastic adjustments, our aim is to have a huge knowledge sharing base of businesses within the F&B industry to move forward in the midst of this challenging situation. So that's all for me. Sit back, relax, and enjoy learning from the experts. And let's discover these new insights together and recover together. Uh, being a Star Wars buff that I am, I have to say, may the fourth be with you. Thank you. All right, and may the fourth be with you as well. Chris, thank you so much for that amazing insights. Now, we all know that the past weeks have been nothing but challenging and surprising to the world. Almost every industry and business are coming up with alternatives to survive this seemingly economic blow. While Zomato is one of those, Part of their mission is still to serve or to be of service to the restaurateurs. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome everyone to day one of quarantine, supporting the food industry in the time of crisis. Our topic for today is branding. Yes, Tony, a very good topic indeed. But before I call our speaker, we'd like to greet some of our participants already who already logged in very very early yes. quite early so i'd like to say hi to renato echevare and good afternoon to chad villarmino and maria isabel bungamong please let us know where you're watching from and if you have any questions for our speakers later we'll be gladly to read to read all those questions and comments and insights as well so hi april to Lossa. hi rainier cresta mccoy there's a lot of viewers today um, Tony, I believe we're almost 300 participants for this I one. Know, and we are, guys, even if we're, we are doing this digitally, this is still interactive. So go ahead and, uh, you know, you have the live, uh, the chat box. You can go ahead and interact with us. We do have our uh, separate Q&A portion for our speakers. So um, uh, just hold your horses, okay, uh, and type in all your questions. And we will try, try our best to accommodate all your questions. Yes, reserve your questions. And please write it on our comment box live. Are you ready, Tony? I'm going to call our first speaker. I am ready, Miss Mice. Okay, our first speaker is here to help you learn about consumer insighting. He is a director of new business development for ADA Asia's Philippine office, one of the leading voices on analytics, data, and how it impacts advertising in the Asia Pacific region. He specializes in business strategies and how brands can win on digital. And he also served with the country's largest creative marketing solutions agency, which is McCann World Group Philippines, as the head of digital strategy and lead for social marketing for Asia Pacific. His industry experience was honed through nearly 150 brand campaigns so far. He is a teacher at heart 
and a recognized educator and among his peers, clients, and students alike. Please welcome Mr. Jason Cruz. Hi, Jason. Please come in. Hi, guys. Is Good afternoon. Okay? Yes, hey. we can hear you. Are you ready? Yeah, should I uh, start sharing my screen? Yes, please. I know my timer is uh, counting, so uh, let's get this. All right, everyone can see it? My, is, uh, is my screen being shared? We can see it. Go ahead, Jason. All right. Hi, guys. Good afternoon. So uh, this is a little bit strange because uh, these Zomato events tend to be better in real, uh, in real life you know, or, or in person. So hopefully this does some justice. So what I'll be sharing with you guys is uh, kind of a road to recovery plan or a three-part game plan, is how I call it, on how you can use insights to help your business survive and even thrive post-COVID-19. So as a way of introduction, my name is Jason and I work with a data and AI company. I'm also a teacher. And since I am aware that I have no talent in the kitchen, I eat out a lot. And that's pretty much my credentials in being able to speak with you restaurateurs and uh, business owners. First of all, I wanna start this by saying that I have missed all of you, all of your restaurants, all of your food, your cafes as well, ever since uh, the quarantine has forced your businesses to close down temporarily. So uh, let me just get that out of the way. I've been forced to cook and it's not been a very good experience, so I cannot wait to visit your establishments after this quarantine. If you have any questions, feedback, or if you want a copy of, these presenta of this presentation, please feel free to send me an email at jason.cruz at ada-asia.com. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to be talking about three things. The first is uh, just a quick you know, recap of how, how we're never going back to the world that we once knew what we can therefore do about it. And I've also want to leave you guys with some thought starters on win-win solutions, something that you that makes you win as a business owner and as well as something that makes your customers win as your patrons and as your audiences. So the first is let's talk a little bit about a permanently changed business landscape because of this pandemic. We know for a fact that the powerful tools of the trade has been taken away from you from your ambience and physical experiences to the high service levels that the vast majority of you are very proud of, as well as engaging the customer's senses with your food. These have been taken away because now people are literally not allowed to go and visit your establishments and take your food. And this brings about a debate of the new normal and its effects for a very high touch industry. I thought it was very interesting that I was typing this on Google yesterday, how will restaurants Actually, I was just going to talk about, I was, I was going to type, how will restaurants deliver food? Uh, and this is precisely what happened. Uh, as you can see in the screen, these are the concerns that people have about uh, restaurants. And I think it's very encouraging that people are looking for restaurants to reopen after this pandemic. It's a world that's been changed irreversibly. And I think the sooner we accept it, the better. But what can we do about it? I think we have to we have to uh, remember that what got us here, which is the, those physical experiences with your food, your beverages, will not get us there. And that there is a post-COVID-19 future. What made us win before as an industry may not make you win in the future. And what we, you can do about it is uh, explore three ways to win. The first is to win with data. The second is with digitization. And the third one is design. Let's take a look at data first. I think that the first way for you to be able to win in this post-COVID-19 world is use data as a way to augment what you know about your market and what you know about your customers. So this is a very recent 90-day stretch of Google searches on Google Trends of what Filipinos are looking for online. And I thought it was very interesting that where to eat is kind of flatlined. There was a bit of an increase in searches for food delivery, but as the food delivery searches peter down, you'll also see a massive increase in people wanting to learn how to cook. And because this are, you know, these are very public and easy to access data, I think this is a good way for you to be able to pivot your business and shift how you think about running a restaurant or running a food business, given that people are definitely bringing the out-of-home experience into an in-home experience. The second is conversion of analog our physical business practices into digital ones. I want to highlight three brands that I have uh, good experiences with 
Uh, these are real brands that I spend my money on, not sponsored at all. The first would be how Maxis Group has gone cashless. I thought that, that that shift in how they wanted to run their business was something really good, something that, that is more necessary and more than ever. And I think as you can as you convert your business model or your revenue model from cash to cashless, you're definitely poised to take uh, to take advantage of this di digitization of business processes. The second is my favorite coffee shop. I used to go to this uh, almost every morning, and that would be Because Coffee by Harlan Holden. I thought that their physical ordering system, which was which is you know moved completely to an app based one, was not only convenient but it was I would say it had an eye in the future. Because it just it's it's low contact, it's low touch. You still get the same kind of coffee that you would have otherwise gotten. And I thought that they were a little bit ahead of the curve. And now what they've done is going to be going it's going to be a normal for us, where we are ordering our food, our beverages through an app system or a platform, rather than going to the store and physically placing an order. And my final example for digitization would be my favorite uh, ramen restaurant in the in, in Manila, at least. That would be Yushoken and Mendokoro. I I have always thought that uh, you know the little sign on their on their on their placemat saying if you if you want to enjoy ramen at home we recommend instant noodles. I thought it was a very humbling and a very admirable thing that they did in terms of saving their business to allow people to consume their really good ramen in the comfort and in the convenience of people's homes. I think this is a good example of pivoting your business model. Pivoting the things that make you a brand into something that is adjusted to how people are going to be consuming your product. And this will probably help them survive and even thrive in a post-COVID-19 world. And the third way to win would be to design around three key areas, which I call reactive, proactive, and status quo customer experiences. What do I mean by proactive experiences? These are actions from people that, that they do proactively to ensure that their wants, their needs, and desires can be met. This is the, uh, an example here is in my own village. There is a community market so, and pasabay programs. It's a proactive action from people to make sure that they still can, they can still get the food and beverages that they want uh, at any time that they need it, or at least alleviate the challenges that are, they're, they're facing uh, in getting them. The second are reactive customer experiences. These are wants, needs, and desires that cause a reaction from customers. So for example, once the quarantine uh, announcements are made, there are instances of hoarding of kitchen supplies as well as kitchen ingredients. For a long time, I couldn't get eggs. I think the first month of the quarantine, I couldn't even buy eggs anywhere because uh, it's a reactive action from people to hoard something in case you know it becomes a scarce uh, product. And the third are status quo behaviors which is uh, no change in behavior of people in relation to their business. So for example, if you have always had a delivery service in the last several years, then people will continue patronizing your business because there is a status quo experience that they have with you and your business. There's no change. The question is, can you now scale it up? Can you now deliver it at maybe a faster tempo? Can you deliver it in a more delightful way? So it's just a, it's just a matter of thinking about making it better rather than inventing something new. For proactive experiences, definitely need some, an invention in terms of creating something for your brand. Uh, and for reactive, what you can did, you know, they reacted to the world that, uh, that's happening around them and they responded, I thought, in a very admirable way. So in a quick summary of the three ways that you can win uh, in my limited time with you guys uh, this afternoon, maybe it's time to use more data for the business Two resources that I think are very useful for restaurant owners, absolutely free for use, would be Google Trends. It's a good way to see uh, the pulse of um, uh, conversations happening around certain topics and Facebook Business Insights. If you have a Facebook page, you definitely know what I'm talking about. The second point would be to move what's possible to digital solutions. I think uh, I was asked two weeks ago during another session like this, uh, how would you encourage people to move to digital uh, given this pandemic, and I'm thinking, first, it's, it's it's 2020, you know. I think digitization of processes is normal. I think it is the present. It's not even the future. I think it's the present. So I think the sooner that we embrace digitization of processes and business solutions, the better in the long term. And finally, to make the customer win, so that you can win, making them win by adjusting our brand, our brand expectations, and our and what we can deliver as a restaurant or as a cafe or as a food provider even 
to people adjust to what they are reacting to or what they're being proactive to because if you can make them win you definitely win as well because you know you move your inventory and you get to sell your product as well so i have three thought starters uh, for you guys as, uh, as takeaways just uh, maybe ways that you can move on after today's session right off the bat the first would be uh, i need i think i need you to ask your team internally when you have a meeting after this call have you built yourself a quarantine persona what's a quarantine persona i think a good way to define this would be new markets your quarantine persona would be an undiscovered or an unusual customer profile and these are people that might find your products or services valuable and necessary during these new times we all have our target consumer audience i think we call them the bullseye target audience right in marketing lingo but maybe it's time for us to look beyond that and look at new personas new audiences to cater to for example uh these are some of the research that we had in, in our company of quarantine personas of how people are behaving uh during the last two months when the obvious ones are easy right people are taking care of their health a bit more people are becoming more active for society but i thought something that was a little bit more unusual would be sad and confused people who are not entertaining themselves anymore because of all the uncertainties what if you could be a brand that can address health concerns of people the whole uh, the whole uh, uh the whole gung-ho factor of you know fighting for society and fighting for those uh, in need and finally being a beacon of hope for people who might be you know like myself i live by myself no idea how to prepare my food could you be a brand could you be a restaurant that becomes like a beacon of hope for those people the second thought starter would be uh, to ask yourselves as well have you future proofed your staff i understand that during these times some of you might be forced to you know cut down your your staff numbers you might have to lean out your teams but i think there is hope for a lot of your your teammates what if you could reskill your companies your restaurants to survive this is not necessarily a brand insights suggestion but it's definitely something that will help build your brand as something that's ready for the future if you're serious about retraining retaining and retraining your people you want to help them adapt and adopt to the digitization of the industry maybe five skill sets that you can focus on would be making your team comfortable with cashless concentrating a little bit more effort on digital customer service third is to think about revamping your whole distribution model the fourth would be to move as many of your analog processes into digital ones and finally maybe it's time to invest in a little bit more content in a few more platforms so that you are always top of mind whenever people are thinking about food when thinking about food preparation or maybe even exploring options on uh, what to suggest to their friends third and final thought starter would be to think about experiences that your audiences could want i think uh, from an insights perspective this could be good questions to ask as you revamp your business model or your restaurant's theme or concept in the next few months for reactive behaviors people are scared and uncertain will you be a brand that is a source of calm stability and reassurance during these trying times and if you can you're definitely addressing how people are reacting to these uncertain times are you going to be addressing the proactive crowd people are figuring out how to adjust to in-home experiences and will you be a brand that resists this or will you be a brand that can guide them and remain meaningful for them as they look for new sources of um, food beverage and what not and finally for status quo audiences people are going to be looking for ways to have their favorite food and drinks at home will you be both an educational and entertaining information source i'm not saying you know put out your recipes out there in public but what if you can make it a little bit easier for people to replicate it using your ingredients maybe right so th these are just thought starters i would love to have a, a deeper chat with all of you guys in a in a different event or maybe in a different uh, forum but with that thank you I wish you all the best. Um, I, I, I love your industry. You guys have been feeding me as ever since I moved out 12 years ago. And if you'd like a copy of this presentation, please feel free to send me an email at jason.cruz at adaasia.com. And my final message to all of you guys in the industry, laban lang. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. Laban lang. I like that. I like that. I really like that. So, Tony. I think your mic is on mute. Okay, Jason, so I'd like to ask a few questions. Siguro, uh, we received some questions already. Uh, we have, by the way, 369 
viewers at the moment and we have a lot yes. of comments uh hi there there are people watching from nueva vizcaya yeah from i'm reading the comments now it's amazing Ilocos. <laughs> it's amazing Ilocos. you're everywhere <laughs> laguna taytay rizal cavite and a lot more so tony so what can you say about the talk ako ang nakapag uh, struck talaga sa akin is have you built your quarantine persona so <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> i really like that nice, eh? you know this thought starters and of course the ways or three ways how to win this battle those are the things that our restaurateurs really need right now yes because a uh, restaurant business is one of the hardest hits of coronavirus so tong crisis natin no? uh, sir jason can you share um well the status of the restaurant business right now um what can you say about it after may 15 is there a need to go back to the operate the normal operation or we can go take away or to go uh businesses for food right uh okay so the the last thing i want to do is make predictions right uh the last thing i want to do is like put set in stone recommendations here but m what my gut and my experience is telling me is that we are going to be you know it's been it's been two months i think we're used to a lot of the things that we're doing and you know how i talked about reactive proactive and status quo experiences of people i think the whole delivery model the whole cashless model is going to be a status quo after this um that one i'm quite certain you know i'm, I'm very confident that that's going to be ha that's going to be happening i think restaurants will still have a place in our lives i think the f and industry will always be an important thing uh for, for people, you know, as, even as, as a lot of us, myself included, learn how to prepare our own food at home, we realize that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not that difficult if you're going for the basics. At the end of the day, food is an innately human and a social experience, and we are humans and we are, we're social creatures. And we're going to be one, you know, we're going to want to go to coffee shops. We're going to want to go to restaurants. There are, I have so many chat groups, you know, talking about guys. Let's uh, let's catch up at a, at a at a at this restaurant. Let's catch up at a cafe. You know, we need we need to all meet in person. I mean, I've been deprived of human contact for a while, so I'm, that's why I'm definitely gonna head out to a restaurant once it's open. But yeah, I think it's uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the new normal, and I think the things that we're seeing now, like cashless, digitized processes, delivery systems. Uh, platforms from from brands, uh, community marketplaces, those are going to stay. I think they're going to stay just because they are showing people that kaya naman pala eh. You know what I mean? Kaya naman eh. So what will change, I think, is that restaurants and business owners might need to think about how they staff their companies. Will, will it demand more investment in uh, digital training? I, I think so. Will it demand more customer service on digital? I think so. Will it demand stronger partnerships with um, delivery providers? I think so as well. Okay, very well said. Tony, yes, we'd like know, also, so you would like to ask a question, right? Mm -mm. Uh, yes, actually, um, not a question though, but uh, Marvin De Silva would like to confirm the email address of Sir Jason. And uh, Oh yeah, please share it. I know it was very fast. Wait, let, I, I can uh, I can share it again, uh, or you guys can yes, share please. it. Yeah, we'll be sending them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and by the oh. way, for those of you who are uh, pre-registered for this event, you will be getting an uh, an online kit that includes the slides of our uh, presenters today. So only for those who have uh, pre-registered for this event. So there you go, guys. That's the email address of uh, Sir Jason Cruz. So take note of that. Screenshot it. Uh, yeah, and so a lot of uh, people are watching. We have from uh, Tayabas and <laughs> everywhere in the Philippines. Yeah, okay. We have a lot of good comments. Hi, Jason from Angao. Significant and concise presentation. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I hope you took down notes also. And a lot of people are watching yeah. from Laguna, Rizal, and different provinces. Great and concise presentation. And quick question, though, from Glowy. Ramiro Robilia, are communities go. going 
going to be a long-term platform to engage customers? How do we continue to engage with them post ECQ? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, the quick answer for that is yes. I think uh, Code Communities is one of as an exa is an example of a proactive customer uh, experience. I think yes, it's here to stay. How do you engage with them? There, I think there are many many ways you can go about it. Uh, off the top of my head, one would be to be part of that community and engage as the brand. The second would be to create your own community, build it around people who like specific things. So for example, people who want coffee delivered to them every morning. I don't know. That's I, I would want that. So yeah, and then you can build your own communities. And uh, I think it should not be a difficult time getting people to join those communities. We're so used to it. Uh, personally, I'm a member of about 14 Facebook and Viber communities. Yeah, I counted before this presentation. So if you need anything, right, you can join these communities. So I think if you're a part of, if you're a restaurant or a product or a service with a with a very specific uh, with a very specific solution to a person's problems, for example, a particular food that you know you do really good uh, versions of, yeah, build your own. So join one, build your own. Another one would be to partner with them as a as either a, a, a partner restaurant or a partner cafe. Maybe you could be the sponsor of the um, of the of the community as well. All right. Okay. Well, I know you guys have a lot of uh, things to ask, Sir Jason, but we do have a separate uh, Q and A later. Um, uh, yeah. We will all uh, join the rest of our presenters for today. But for now, thank yeah. you so much, Sir Jason, for that very insightful session. Thank you, Jason. Thank you as well. See you later. See you later. later. So, Tony, we would right. like to call our next speaker. Go ahead. Yes, we are really, really excited for this, and we're just getting started, guys. So our next speakers are two halves of Geyser McClam, one of the leading PR marketing communications, public affairs and risk issues, and crisis management companies in the Philippines. The first one is a global award-winning brand architect, experienced risk crisis reputation strategist, and marketing communications innovator. She is the first communication professionals uh, professional in the country and ever to be accomplished in both marketing and crisis management. She is also a public relations forerunner in the sphere of digital transformation, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and other emerging technologies. Also, the next one is an award-winning communication strategist and crisis manager, plus a certified enterprise risk manager working in the large brands in the Philippines for 20 years. He has handled more than 50 high profile crisis uh, cases from private to public sectors. With this, he has also handled hundreds of brands for reputation, transformation, and enhancement. He is the founder and president of Geyser McClang Marketing Communications. Friends, here to tackle content creation, Ms. Amor McClang and Mr. Brad Geyser. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello, are we Hi there. Good morning. Hello. Hi. We're not good morning. Good afternoon. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone's Tony very excited. Nice. Hello. Hello, Ms. Yes. Moore, and everyone's uh, very before, excited for your talk. Yes. Before, yes. Uh, before, before uh, I turn it over to Brad, um, I would like to, I'd like to uh, give context. Sorry, Brad. Sorry, I Brad. I think you need to go on mute first. Hello? Okay. Um, before I turn it over to Brad, I think I would like to uh, provide context as to how our uh, presentation is going to go about this afternoon. Um, I'll start off a bit uh, with uh, um, some notes on what we're currently going through. Uh, then Brad will serve you what we term as our nine course tasty menu. Yes, because at the core of Geyser Maklang, we really started with food brands and um, uh, food is gonna be with us for a long, long time. It's our only outlet to travel and experience outside of our, our apartment, right? Um, and then after that, we did a, a small research with um, everyone in Zomato. Thank you for all your responses. And um, what we'll do is we'll answer all of them. We'll try to answer most of them in the context of how we can use the current challenges you sent over 
as a differentiator for marketing. Okay. So, um, Brad, why don't you start first? Okay. Thanks some more. Um, could we start the presentation? Great. Um, so we, uh, we decided to, uh, stick with our food theme. As Samor mentioned, we are, uh, raging foodies. Um, so what everybody wants to know in the industry is what's on the menu post ECQ. Um, and so we consider this a, an opportunity guide, uh, for the food service. Now, what you should understand about us, um, is that we're not like what you would call your typical um, marketing practitioner. We're used to dealing with um, brands and businesses that are having, you know, uh, uh, I guess you can call it uh, existential threats um, to the to their uh, to their to their companies and helping them deal with things they didn't prepare for don't know how to deal with and how to get through them um, so this is our nine course tasting uh, our nine course tasting menu um, I, I think it uh, got a little cut off okay so uh, chapter uh, chapter one uh, pathfinders so the thing is is how you need to understand us is we basically go around and help companies when they are, you know, when there's no way they come to us and, you know, we, we help them find the way. Uh, this is, uh, this is not, uh, what you would call a regular and normal skill set because usually finding the way involves, um, breaking rules, uh, inventing new things, uh, creating uh, creating new workarounds that never existed before. Um, it's really on the edge of innovation. We've been doing this now for 20 years. And um, you could say that what we do is we build very profitable reputations for businesses of all shapes and sizes. Because right now, this is a, you know, you talk about brand. The, the, the problem is, is that the way people tend to understand brand is they understand like a name and a logo and an image and, but that's not really the brand. That's like looking at a bottle of wine and saying the bottle is the wine. It's, it's not, it's actually the reputation that is what's valuable. And so this is what we help build. Next slide, please. Okay. So let's, uh, let's start with a little appetizer. Um, so that was our amuse bouche. Uh, so our appetizer is called the Great Reset. Um, now, when people talk about innovation, um, usually what they talk about is the idea of uh, finding some new way of competing against what's already out there. But this is the thing about the Great Reset. Technically, there's really nothing out there. We don't know what the world is going to look like post COVID. Nobody's even sure what they're going to do. You know, you have people who are saying they're going to, they're going to go out and they're going to go see this and they're going to go do that. Really? You know, sit at that table. You're going to go put your head in that chair. You're going to go put your hands on that table. You're going to go shake my hand. I don't think so. Um, there is going to become a thing called uh, social, ostr uh, social ostracizing for people who don't keep people safe in any event. Um, so the thing is, is you can only copy, if you can only copy what other people have done, what do you do when no one has done it? You need to be able to think, in terms of what's in front of you and what do people really need. Um, some of you are gonna close until clarity emerges. Not all of you are going to be able to innovate in this environment. Um, and post ECQ is, uh, is a blank canvas. No one really knows what they're gonna do. Um, the values have changed. 
uh, everyone's values have changed. Um, everyone's values have changed. Um, and uh, um, some of you will have vanishingly rare opportunity to recreate the industry from the ground up uh, with early adopters and other innovators. Next slide, please. Um, so the next part of it is, is many of you are struggling to say where you find, uh, where you're finding customers, but exactly the time when everybody is looking for, looking to start cooking and, and, and make things, this is exactly the time when the supermarket system has kind of broken down and become problematic. People spending hours and hours at the supermarket because they can only allow 50 people at a time. Major stockouts because the usual, the usual exported, uh, imported products aren't available. Um, so you now have an opportunity, if you can reimagine yourself as somebody who doesn't just cook food and serve food, but as somebody who supplies where the gaps in the, where the big yawning gaps in the, in the, in the supply chain have opened up, um, you have a massive opportunity available for you. Don't just think of yourself in terms of, I cook food, I serve food. Now, the other part of it is, and this is also wonderful for you, is local is the new safe. Local is the new safe. Local is the new important. Everyone has realized now that uh, that the food system that's not a food system that doesn't have a local component to it is a vulnerable food system. So the desire to support local has never, never been stronger. And um, building communities is a wonderful idea so long as these are local communities. Think of yourself as like a community manager. Um, Restaurants as an alternative ingredient sourcing for consumers. Again, the supermarkets are, are, are out of a lot of things. Um, recently, we were at a supermarket that was out of butter. Butter. Um, you can use your powers of sourcing that you use to stock your restaurants as a service for consumers that they will pay premium for because we miss our ingredients. The other part of it is the fair validation for farmers. I will say one thing, many, many of you for restaurants have not done part of your job. Part of your job as a restaurateur is to validate the agriculture system of the Philippines. French chefs are wonderful but they stand on the shoulders of French agriculture. It's important for you to build each other up. And as you can see, when the people who grow our food are challenged, you will be challenged. Delivery skills have also leveled up. Now there is the delivery experience. There is the unboxing experience. Things that gadgets and technology have long ago learned and embraced. These are the things that you need to embrace too. Urban gardening, uh, the longer the lockdown um, uh, stays in place, and we don't know if there's going to be another one, um, urban gardening uh, is becoming more and more of an important um, option. So the idea that all you are is uh, we cook food and serve food, maybe you help people grow food too. Um, now, this this seemed like a weird and radical and out of your out of your uh, out of your model um, uh, type of thinking. Yes, this is the point. You do need to be out of your model. You need to start thinking about new models. Um, the other part of it is collaboration. So one of the things that uh, used to be a big deal is there would be people around the neighborhood who would cook things. Someone makes lasagna, someone makes cookies, someone makes crispy pata, um, and they sell, serve them to others. 
you should be collaborating with those types of village cooks and enhancing your own menu with their products and them enhancing their menus with yours to create a more cohesive local ecosystem. We need a lot more cooperation than we do competition. Next slide, please. Um, so the other thing is, is right now, very likely, the customer is your cook. Um, food kits are an emerging trend. Um, Mendecoro, which was mentioned earlier about, you know, if you want takeout, go somewhere else. Well, guess what they're doing now? They have food kits. And actually, I tried one. They're, it's very good. Um, we really enjoyed the we really enjoyed the ramen. Um, so, some the thing is is just like the cooks in your restaurants. Some cooks are better than others. Some customers make uh, make better cooks than others. Are you being sensitive to this fact? Because some people want more sophisticated. Some people want very simple. Uh, and those are different markets now. Um, do you elevate their cooking skills? Um, some people want to become better cooks as a result of this. Are you helping them with their kits? Do you make them look good to their family? And do they, do they look good on Instagram? Are you very Instagrammable? Becomes different because before Instagrammable was plating, now someone else is plating for you. So you need a different type of Instagram approach, probably closer to the unboxing part of it. They're bored. Um, a lot of people are eating the same food over and over and over again. There's a lot of fatigue. And the reason why they're eating and ordering a lot of the same food over again is because they're not comfortable with branching out to lots of different sources. So if you're a trusted source, your ability to provide new fare to them is going to become very important. So whereas before when you were a public restaurant where you would have these huge, you know, local groups of people and you could just focus on one, uh, you could just focus on one thing and that would be fine. Here in this environment, um, putting forth a variety or at least some innovations will prevent them from becoming bored with you. Another is, can you teach their kids to cook? So now one of the things is, is a lot of kids are out of school. A lot of kids are not learning anything. Now is a good time for kids to pick up some pretty important skills. And a lot of children never learn to cook. And it's becoming very clear that this is an important skill set. Maybe you can help. Uh, and also, finally, can you become an alternative to the raw ingredient shopping? Um, you buy lots of uh, products in bulk and you process them. Maybe all you need to do is specialty processing for your customers and you can get a hold of the raw ingredient market as well at a premium. Next. Five. Rethinking public space. <sighs> okay. Sometimes the Philippines, one of the things that we do is we look at concepts that are coming from other countries and we adopt them because we think they know better. This is dangerous because our circumstances are not their circumstances. Um, social distancing in a country, in a small country with 118 million people is hard to impossible. Um, your restaurants don't have a lot of square footage inside of them, and you're trying to maximize all of that. Social distancing is going to be hard, if not impossible. You have to think social barrier, barrier. So when you think, think about it in, in the most basic terms, is everything that the customer touches fresh is the tablecloth fresh is the chair cloth cover du duvet chair duvet fresh is the are the utensils sealed and fresh um 
Is your food covered, right, when it's being served? How fresh are you? How are you using air purification systems that help take out viruses with UV? There are lots of things. You need to start looking about the, at the barriers, the things that protect, the things that make the customer feel safe, the things that engender trust. A crowded restaurant is now an undesirable restaurant. Whereas before people would, remember the good old days when people would stand in line for crowded restaurants? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so uh, transparent cooking spaces, uh, we think, um, may also be very, very catchy. Not open cooking spaces, um, meaning that there needs to be barriers because that makes people feel safe. But, but... Uh, people should be able to see in and make sure that your workers, your chefs, your cooks are covered in the and protected in the appropriate way. Super hygienic is what engenders trust. Next slide. Okay, now um, one of the things about Geyser McLang is we do a lot of research. So we'd like to talk to you about an emerging trend. This trend is called the Nutricurian. So this is derived from Epicurean. Epicurean means a person who derives pleasure from eating. And Filipinos have historically been Epicurean. Um, we don't, as a rule, tend to look at food as an active delivery system for nutrition. We tend to look at it as an active delivery system for pleasure. And this is the vast majority of Filipinos, but, but we have noticed that Filipinos that get a health scare sometimes shift, they flip to this idea of a person who derives emotional pleasure from eating healthy, nutritionally potent foods. They've had a health awakening. They tend to follow a guru or a coach they tend to do a lot of research so that they like information. Uh, it's often combined with fitness lifestyles. Um, it's, but one of the things that you should note that's the difference between them and others are delicious is the secondary consideration to the nutritional value. They actually have a preference for food remedies. So they like things that actually, you know, help you when you're feeling down um, especially when it comes to dealing with immune systems, superfoods, antioxidants, organics, these are the new buzzwords. And this is gonna become important because everybody has just had a health scare and everybody is concerned about their immune system. Okay. Next slide, please. The next group that we talk about that you might want to consider is uh, the idea of zero wasters. So um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with zero waste as a movement. This is the idea that they do not want to contribute to landfill, garbage, the ocean, uh, you know, plastic in the, in the ocean. This is a rapidly growing movement. And the ECQ has very much frustrated their lifestyle choice because in the ECQ right now, the way everything is set up, it's next to impossible for you to be zero waste. And I will tell you the ideological amongst them will pay extra for a zero waste solution for getting food delivered to them. Um, this will give you quite a competitive edge in delivery. There are thousands and thousands of these people and they also tend to be very influential inside of their families trying to move things forward. Um, they are looking for no plastics and no landfill options. Going after this particular group um, gives you a tremendous, uh, will give you a tremendous leg up over the others when you can say you're zero waste. Don't greenwash though, don't do zero, don't say zero waste unless you are zero waste because it will have exactly the opposite effect. Next slide, please. Okay, 
Um, this is a discussion about bridging the trust chasm. Uh, chasm. Uh, <laughs> um, one thing that I would like to do is I would like to turn this over to Amor because this is really her area of expertise. Um, so I, I'd like to, at this particular point, bring Amor back in to talk about uh, bridging this chasm of trust that you need to jump over if you're going to win. Hi, guys. Hi. All right. Um, what I'd like to be able to do at this point is um, surface the findings of the research that we initially did uh, with you. And uh, thank you so much for the overwhelming response because we wanted to make sure that your questions were, were properly addressed and answered, right? Uh, first and foremost, um, some of the questions were surrounding shifting product offerings. So when it comes to discussing, uh, when it comes to discussing about trust, Brad, we can we can um, uh, just put on the cover slide. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we're able to speak to you uh, regarding the real concerns that you guys have in the industry and give you practical marketing and brand solutions that immediately run away with. First and foremost, uh, dear Geyser McClung, um, from dine in to take out, we don't do deliveries. Are we even going to open during the ECQ or shall we just write it out? First and foremost, you absolutely need to stay relevant, right? Out of taste, out of mind. So if they're yearning for a burger and they've always loved yours. You need to make sure that you are a viable, even you need to make sure that you are an available option. This is uh, similar to what happens when you're out of stock in a supermarket. Um, uh, you, you can minimize the slide and it's okay. Thank you. I'm just going to, to talk to, to our audience. So it's similar when you're out of stock in the supermarket. Um, it's an absolute no-no because what will happen is your market will gravitate towards your competitors. Many are also saying we don't have our own fleet delivery solution. Anymore. That is actually not a challenge at all. I mean, even a non-food delivery brand like Ancas has opened up uh, Ancas Food and it's now the preferred partner for many premium brands, right? So even a brand like Carmen's Best, which historically does not even deliver, is now partnered with, um, you know, Ancas Food. And this is great for you, uh, small restaurant owners. You don't have to um, acquire uh, your own delivery fleet. Everything's outsourced. It's, uh, uh, you don't have to do any type of maintenance. You provide revenue um, and help out um, uh, the livelihood of many delivery people. This is to win for you. So if you're not yet delivering and you're just focused on pickup, you can change that and increase your sales. Next, um, how do we maintain food quality and improve our turnaround time, right? This is, this is a question for many of you. Um, one of my favorite pasta brands, um, the of the Margarita Forest Group, Chibo, and also Amano, they used to have a rule which is no delivery, um, and that was same as uh, same as uh, Mendocoro. But they've since relaxed it with appropriate caveats as to how to cook and prepare the food. Right, so. You need to continue to be present. We, I need our chefs there, especially those restaurants that are chef-driven and chef-led, chef to relax a bit or even Okay, great. Um, next, uh, buffet. We are a buffet brand and a shared brand, and it's no longer allowed. Um, maybe not 
uh, buffets the way, say, Vikings is done or Hamayan is done. Um, but you could do DIY hot pots and DIY fondues, uh, fondue parties. So I'm talking about uh, shared food experiences, right? So you can use it as a way to prepare the food uh, as a community, as a family, and in the process, enhance the experience at home. So it might not be, it, it could be all you can eat tempura, right? Tokyo Tempura is now offering their all you can eat tempura um, uh, at home. I mean, a great, great innovation. Also, for, uh, a more uh, Geyser Maklang, we only do fresh or grilled food and it's not meant for delivery. Um, our friend uh, Kian Kazemi of Persia Grill has uh, done a great workaround here, which is, um, you know, all their fresh kebabs and their kobides uh, can now be prepared at home. So it's ready to cook, ready to grill, ready to fry. You just have to be very explicit with the cooking instructions. Now, um, I know that certain areas are uh, under alcohol lockdown. So um, what we want to be able to suggest for beverages, instead of being it via tingye, via tingye is you can do um, beverage subscriptions. So, for example, prepay uh, pre instead of uh, instead of selling it by bottle, you could do it uh, uh, and sell it as a three month, uh, um, six month subscription. Pay in bulk, uh, buy uh, via cases, and present it and package it like um, a beverage subscription. Now, the second bucket of concerns sent to us was about uh, limited accessibility, guys. It, I live in Makati and I work in Makati. Um, my, my dining and food choices used to be very limited to uh, a BGC in Makati. And now I'm enjoying and experiencing restaurant and food options in San Juan or even as far as Quezon City. Uh, the limited area coverage is no longer an issue. Yesterday, I sent uh, a fresh bug net pack from Quezon City to Las Piñas, right? To Las Piñas. And this is a uh, shout out to uh, Manong Bagnet, who only used to sell every Saturday in the uh, Salcedo market. And now, now we can have really better than a Sean, I have to say, um, any day of the week. And her customer service is just amazing. Shua out there. Now, how about... Uh, limited food uh, availability and uh, challenge with raw ingredients are more. Our recommendation here via marketing is just focus. If you used to have a 15 or 30 point menu and now you're limited to just focus on your specialty, like say burgers, um, a, a great case in point is this um, a cute burger joint that I just recently met through ECQ called Hack and Stack. And um, um, they have a really extensive diner menu, but now they're focusing on DIY hot dog and burger kits. And it's really the bomb. It's super good. So they've been forced to focus um, and, and, and just push out their great products, which is the burger and the hot dogs. So if you can't sell everything, that's fine. Just focus on what you do extremely well. Now, um, how about if we operate in malls, schools, hotels, and bars? Demand for your food is not going to go away. That's the good news. But I really seriously doubt it if the demand to eat in your original venues will still be there. Even with uh, the lifting of the lockdown, I really doubt that people will have the appetite to um, go out publicly anytime soon. But what's important is you continue to nurture um, the, the craving and the demand for your food. Because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the only way we can travel uh, outside of these four of our apartment is through food. For example, um, whenever I feel like I want a, a little piece of Mediterranean, the Levant region or Israel, I order falafel yo. So special shout out to... 
um, uh, the man's of uh, falafel yo, which I think uh, inarguably is one of the best falafel in town. And um, they're authentic. They sell a very authentic experience. They talk about, you know, tahini and amba and sumac, things that you can only get to experience if you really have traveled in the region. So you are now the replacement to National Geographic. Your Instagram pages should be talking about the region and how to um, how to enjoy traveling through your taste buds, no? Not just about the food. But how about limited hours? Actually, the ECQ has afforded you more flexible hours. Um, one of my favorite uh, burger places is Nokal, right? So the brands that I'm mentioning here, none of them are, these are all brands I patronize and I personally can vouch for. NoCal used to only be open from 6 p.m. onwards. Now I can get a burger at 10.30 a.m. Now I don't know how healthy that is, but then I am not a Nutricurian, nutri like Brad said, I'm more of an Epicurean. Um, now, what if we're located in a place where, um, you know, uh, some, some instances of COVID, COVID have been detected? The real underlying anxiety of most clients is the safety of your food. And um, whether or not you're HACCP certified, being COVID safe is now the new branding. Um, what I'd like you to be able to do, and this is an advantage, especially for the bigger chains out there, um, is to really harp on how well you prepare and how clean your food preparation systems are. Make a TikTok video out of it. Make an infographic about it, about it because, you know, at the end of the day, they're not just buying how yummy your food is, but how safe you prepare it. So COVID safe is a new uh, restaurant premium, food premium. Now, but a more, we only accept cash, right? We don't do, we only accept cash. We don't do um, online payments. Guys, you don't have to, well, I, I can devote a totally different talk on, on e-commerce and, and electronic payments and online payments, being a big advocate of fintech um, in the country. But you don't need anything to high tech to go online, right? I now have a personal relationship and have the bank account numbers of many of my favorite restaurants um, because with with the advent of online banking you can you can you can access and transform um your business into a click uh, a brick and click a partial brick and click right i know it's not yet e-commerce for 24 7. you still require some kind of um uh human interface and that's okay but at least if you can solve the payment solution um by signing up for an online account like union bank or may bank or even uh, a simple gcash it's going to solve a lot of problems now um a few final points about building customer interest if you are if you are a chef-led restaurant there has never been a better time to engage your customers um I know of this uh, catering chef, his name is Chef uh, Juan Del Prado, who caters to the stars. He makes awesome paella and calios. Um, he's never had to do uh, home deliveries, but he is now. He's doing videos and he's making himself uh, very accessible. Um, chef Jordi Navarra, special shout out to the Toyo people. Um, imagine the top restaurant in the Philippines, according to the Mila Guide in one of the top 50 in Asia. They're serving uh, their uh, tocino muffins and also the pancit. And who do you get to chat with at the end of the Instagram line and uh, the WhatsApp line? It's Chef Jordi Navarro himself, right? Um, so if you're the type who easily gets starstruck with chefs, right? They're, they're much bigger stars for me than actual celebrities are. Now is really the time for you to engage your community, talk to your community, create videos, um, and um, with your market. Now, um, senior, my market are primarily senior citizens or the older generation. What do we do, guys, or Maklang? 
focus on the simpler solutions like um, Instagram and Facebook specifically because that's more demographic um, age uh, uh, age and demographic uh, demographic wise. More importantly, you don't need any type of super high tech digital intervention to jump online. Advertise advertising on Facebook is so DIY. What you really just need to do is come up with a sexy strategy and augment it with influencer marketing. Before I close, I'm going to turn it over to Brad to close with the influencers. Um, but let me just walk through some more ideas very quickly based on your ask. Now, beating competition. Um, right now, there's an ongoing burger battle in my heart between if I don't have the time, I have so many conference calls, I call in Ocal. And if I have the time, I call in Hackenstack because they make their own um, burger kits, right? So effectively position yourself. You could either be ready to eat or ready to cook. Now, how do you transform if your brand is primarily an experiential brand? I'd say, for example, an ice cream brand like Baskin and Robbins, right? Where they sell by the mega giant tubs. You can come up with a campaign um, that's related to binge watching. While you're binge watching on Netflix, why not binge eat ice cream for the family, right? For the family. Um, that would be what that would be a cute and clever way. So dovetail on um, uh, trends that are very relevant right now. So throw a, a crash landing on you binge party supported by uh, Baskin and Robbins, for example. Or I just recently saw this great series called Into the Night and I binge watched it. And what better way to do it than do it with ice cream? Now, finally, staffing issues, right? Staffing issues. Um, now is the time to retool and upscale. So if they used to be wait staff, maybe now you can retool and retrain them to be customer service uh, people to receive online um, to online requests or queries. Uh, to the restaurant owners who are doing deliveries for the first time, uh, please be less prescriptive and less strict. If your market is asking you to arrange delivery for them instead of the other way around, accommodate and do so and just charge them accordingly, right? Um, you have to make it as simple and as worry free for them as possible. People are willing to pay for a premium right now because of convenience and also because of boredom. Now, um, now many of you are asking, uh, as a final point, before I turn it over to Brad to close, we don't have budget for marketing, right? We don't have budget for marketing. Uh, this is not something that we needed to do before. Uh, being heard and being felt and engaging with your community has never been more important than now. Like I said, um, especially if you need to close certain branches uh, and streamline your operations, you need to be able to positively convey and engage with your clientele. Remember guys, um, in China, and I'm not talking about during the time of COVID, but this is uh, a good 12, 24, 24 months ago. Uh, primarily, understand that um, most of the food uh, service in China is actually delivery, and they're doing a lot of cloud kitchen. So this is going to be the future, right? Um, and in a very low environment uh, where you are being introduced perhaps for the first time uh, to your market because of COVID, now is really the time to be present, to be heard, and to be more available. So those are your questions, Amato community. We're very happy to be of service. I'll turn it over to Brad to close the Kaiser McClung segment. Thank you so much and stay well. Brad? Yep. Thank you, more. Okay. Um, could you put the presentation back up, please? Thank you. All right. So as Amor had mentioned, the Philippines is a low trust environment. 
Um, and this is the reason why, despite the fact that there are these lo lots of large websites and things, and some of them are successful, most Filipinos prefer to buy from someone they know, or at least they know of. Um, they don't want to risk their food budget on someone they don't know or somebody who's not trusted. So this is one of the reasons why influencer marketing um, is still important but has changed. It's now local community leaders, local influencers. It's geographic um, that's going to become far more important for you in terms of creating a community and an ecosystem that will, uh, that will trust you to buy from them, to, to, to trust you to, to buy from you. Um, reputation that is clear and built from credible, connect, credible and connected uh, will put you in everyone's mental list. That's what you want. You want to be in everyone's mental, what should I eat tonight list. Got it. Next. Next. Last slide. Okay, great. So let's talk about this from the way forward. It's really a three-step it's really a three-step process. You need to work on three things. You need to work on your innovation. That's how you're going to respond. The niche that you're the niches that you're going to be that you're going to be targeting. You need to focus on your reputation. That's with a specific community, your local community, certain interest groups inside of the community, with influential people inside of that community. And then the third part of it is amplification. Once you have the rep, when you have the reputation and the innovation, pushing out your amplification will yield you the kind of results that you're really looking for. Because what will happen is if you amplify without doing your innovation and your reputation, particularly your reputation, they'll ask themselves, who are these guys? And if nobody answers them back, they're not going to, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, um, buy from you. They might buy from you if you're very creative and very innovative. Try, but it's not it's not that effective. But if you're innovative and you've got the reputation and you amplify yourself, that's the formula. That's the one that gets you. That's the one that gets you the the the, the customers you need to stay alive. And we want you to stay alive. We want you to do well. You know, we want the food industry of the of the Philippines to stay strong. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was very, very insightful, oh. very practical, very powerful. Thank you so much, um, Sir Brad Geisler and Ms. Amor Maklang. I took down notes. I have a lot of notes, Ms. Amor. <laughs> Me Thank too. you. I've got notes here. <laughs> I would like to right. also greet our viewers. Uh, hi, Miss Amor from Davao, uh, Gachi Gachalian. And we have a few questions for you. But before that, we'd like to call on our uh, speaker earlier, our first speaker, Jason, for our QA. So, Jason, please come in. Hey, guys. Do um, we still have Sir Jason? I yep. So, uh, I, I didn't expect us to uh, to go a little bit over time, so I, I, I want to apologize. I have to jump to another call. I have a meeting with my team. Here's what I'm gonna do because uh, I've always loved the Zomato community. What I've done is I've set up a Zoom call. I blocked off my own time today at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Only for the participants of this call, I will I will send you guys the Zoom link for a Q&A. I really have to run. I am so sorry. Thank you guys for inviting me. Uh, Thank you, sure Jason. Thank one, you so hour, much. one hour is blocked off later for anybody in this call who wants to have a QA. Stay safe. Stay safe. I gotta go. Sorry, guys. All right. Bye. Thank All you, right. Dennis Jason. Um, please stay with us, Sir Brad, and with some more. We have a few questions. I have a lot of takeaways yes. actually, and I like what Sir Brad said earlier that this is the great reset, but the possibilities is endless and limitless. There's no uh, limitations. We can still grow, especially in the food uh, businesses. And we have a question right here from Marvin De Silva. Uh, Brad, do you think that the social media will be bombarded so much of online ads and pitches for e-commerce and digital marketing? 
Well, they were already bombarded before COVID. Um, so yeah, uh-huh. clearly, there, clearly there's going to be a lot of noise, but I believe that the Filipino people have a wonderful trick for getting around that, which is they only deal with people they know. They only deal with people who have a reputation. So just straight advertising really only gets you the very, a very low percentage of very, if, if there's a lot of really hungry, I can't find what I need and you're really saying it just right, straight advertising works fine. But for most of us, uh, for the vast majority of businesses, um, you need to have the reputation Repu- we have a we have a saying, cute saying, reputation precedes revenue. When you have the reputation, people buy from you. When you don't have the reputation, they'll see your ads. They might be a little curious, but they won't buy. Uh, so you really need that. And it and reputation is two parts. It's how you're known, and who's saying it. Right. Thank you so much, Brad. And uh, you know what? We are talking about not only the present uh, situation, but more of sustainability and how to, you know, to really uh, come up with better solutions um, uh, for this kind of crisis. But there's one thing here. We've been talking about, uh, you know, delivery and all, but we do have a question from our live uh, feed here. Uh, Delivery is efficient and quick now because of ECQ, but post ECQ, there may be traffic challenges again affecting food and quality safety. So, how can we uh, somehow address that one? Yes. Uh, I'd yes. Like uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to address that if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I think the question, yes, the, the question is about uh, once the ECQ is lifted, will traffic be back in play? Uh, guys, that's exactly why. Uh, we have the two-wheel delivery, right? So um, two-wheel delivery systems are really intended to obviate and undermine traffic. Um, I think they're going to be here to stay. Uh, motorcycle taxis and public vans will uh, continue to not be allowed under any type of community quarantine. And therefore, more and more of them are discovering the joy of online delivery and food delivery. So guys, if you don't have um, a delivery strategy yet, I suggest you do. It comes at absolutely cost you. And um, you can actually get married to one or two or three. Grab Lalamu or Ankas or even Mr. Speedy. Now, uh, I just want to answer very quickly what would be so clearly about um, with everyone now advertising online, well, there are a lot of noise. Absolutely. And that's why you can't just be doing advertising online. You need to have a strong cut through strategy, a unique story. That's one. Second, you need to get it out uh, by uh, uh, your trusted sources or your influencers. That's why uh, a lot of what we've been doing is do product seeding to influencers, media, foodies, etc. cetera. Um, so these are your trusted could do it, so to speak. We see them out, and then you just uh, push with additional online advertising. But online advertising unto itself will not be sufficient. You're absolutely right um, regarding that. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Ms. Moore. We have another question. How to stand out against social media clutter? Because there's a lot of people pitching on social media. And this is uh, also about brand visibility. So how do we stand out against the social clutter, social media clutter? OK, um, I'd like to start with this one. Um, so the first part of it is uh, focus. So. Remember before that I was speaking about two emerging groups that we started to that that we've been seeing that are just starting to gain a foothold inside of the Philippines, like the zero wasters and the and the Nutricurians. Well, I can't speak for the Nutricurians, but the zero wasters, they have their own sites. They have they have group sites that have thousands and thousands of members. Um, rather than just bombarding in what you'd call the the the, the general population uh, types of you know types of uh, um, social media, where 
you're hitting a vanishingly small group of people who care about you, why don't you simply look for groups of people that are, well, more geographically close to you? Because, you know, a lot of the solutions that are out there are out there, like they're far away. Um, and then the other parts of it are, there are those that are much more interested in what it is that you're doing specifically. And that's how you need to start, how you need to start targeting. Um, the big general types of advertising stuff, it's expensive and it's debatable how effective, how effective it is uh, if your um, food establishment is below a certain size. Um, or, I mean can I Would you like to add? So you're yes, asking, please. Yes, absolutely. You're asking about how to stand out. The only way to stand out is really through focus. For example, um, if you are a, a home catering company and you serve eight to ten dishes, focus on only one thing, right? So uh, uh, once paella, paella is what you do the best. Focus on paella, right? Um, focus on one thing, right? I mentioned earlier earlier about Hackensack, they have this extensive food menu. They've just decided to focus on their DIY burgers. And, you know, um, um, it's really, I, I think we lost Ms. Amor. Oh, we lost Ms. Amor. Okay, I think she's coming back. Um, I'd like to greet everyone okay. who's okay. watching she, yeah, right she, now. Okay. And, uh, Feliz Lim Perez, bravo, really enjoying this. So many good ideas and great information. Mr. Yes. Morris, back, you may continue, Mr. Yes, Morris. There you go. <laughs> yes, I'm back. Sorry, the chat's been very choppy. I hope that then answered it. Focus. Focus really on your one core product and make it shine. It's only one thing they know about you um, and you'd be talking of mind for focus on that you do things well focus on the one thing that you okay yeah. tony okay. do you have any we can entertain two more questions i think we're running yes. out of time but yes, we'll be uh, happy to hear from you yes go ahead all right so this is uh from uh, one of our uh, registrants you know um if your if the target market is a senior citizen old or the older generation uh, as the primary target who's not tech savvy, how can we handle those kinds of uh, you know market? I think uh, I think I may have answered that, answer that uh, earlier. Uh, earlier, which your is your toolkit simple. Your toolkit um, simple. I um, mean, focus on just. Uh, focus on just uh, um, Brad, Brad, can you mute, please? Um, if you could just only focus on channels that are accessible to them, for example, Facebook. Uh, uh, fo focus on channels that are, are comfortable to them, mm. like, like Facebook on, or Instagram. And if they're not on either of the market. <laughs> okay. Well, what was the other question? Sorry. Oh, the tech, the not so tech savvy oh, senior citizens. Gosh. How can they enjoy the online food? Use uh, the, the phone. Food. Yeah. <laughs> Use the old school phone. Yes, yes, definitely. It's, yes. it's very simple. And, and and hey, look, if you're willing to go through the effort of using the SMS and and an actual voice call. I'm sure you'll become very popular with that segment of the with that segment of the population. Yeah, um, you're going yeah. to have to you're going to have to be very patient. You're going to have to be very diligent, and you're going to have to take very careful notes of what they want. But it's going to be one of these areas where I imagine they're going to have a very small circle of trust. And if you're inside of that circle of trust, chances are you'll be a regular customer. You'll be a re they'll be a regular customer for you. Oh, okay. Oh, there's another question here from our uh, live audience uh, from Nicole C. How about food carts or catering carts that only uh, can operate during events? 
uh, like mobile bars, for example, I don't think uh, there will be any social events anytime soon. How can we thrive during this time? I have a radical suggestion. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the radical suggestion, and, and so I'm not talking about what we'll call, I'm talking carts. I'm not talking about booths. I'm talking carts. Mm -hmm. Um, do cart delivery. Um, one of the nice things about carts are they keep food in sort of pristine condition up until it's being served. For example, uh, an ice cream cart, the ice cream that's being served from it is really fresh from the, is really fresh from the freezer. A uh, hot dog cart, the hot dog is nice and hot and fresh, or the burger cart, or the fish ball cart, or whatever cart it is. Go to the location, go to the, loca go to the location, be the delivery, be your own delivery agent. Um, go to the location and deliver up, deliver up. The, the fact that you have social media, if you have social media, you're just as logistically enabled as everybody else. And all you have to do is um, start creating customers, multiple customers in single geographies. So you, so when you go to a particular apartment building um, or housing complex, you have more than one customer at a time. And you can actually even help ask your customers to help you do that. There is no problem in this, in this uh, COVID lockdown phase for asking for for asking for help from from the customers that love you, because the customers that love you want you to succeed, um, and will actually create a certain amount of ownership for your product brand self person. Um, so that's how I would handle it. All right. Uh, thank you for uh, answering all the questions, uh, Brad. And I think we lost Miss Amor, uh, but I hope she would come back because, ladies and gentlemen, for all those who are. Uh, viewing us right now that's the end of today's open forum thank you so much once again to uh, to miss more sir brad and sir jason for gracing today's uh quarantine episode of zomato now before we officially end this webinar we will now call on uh, mr chris evans to digitally present a certificate right. of appreciation to our guest speakers um, okay uh and guys, uh, if you have any more questions, please, by all means, uh, come, come visit Amor McLang on her Instagram. Uh, so just look for Amor McLang on, on Instagram and uh, she will answer any questions you have. Uh, we are here to help the Philippines. Yes. Just just say Zamato so she knows. We can you. hear you, Miss Amor. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of questions actually on our live comments from our participants and also from our Facebook page. You might want to visit that also or get yes. the questions. And is there any email address that they can send uh, inquiries about content creation and marketing? Would you like to announce that, Brad? Sure. Um, in, uh, if you want to reach us via email, uh, that's info at Geyser McLang Network, Geyser McLang Network dot com. Info at Geyser McLang Network dot com. That's info at Geyser McLang Network dot com. Yes. Okay. So we have Chris here. Hi, Chris. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, thank you. Everybody for your insights. I think I'll just reiterate as well that everybody who's pre-registered will receive a copy of the slides from each speaker, not just today, but on Wednesday and Friday's session as well. And that will include uh, the appropriate contact details. So of course, the, the most important uh, opportunity here is to, to share some knowledge, which we've had today. Uh, as, as always is the case with uh, events in the Philippines, I'm finding, uh time is of the essence and they always run a little bit over uh so <laughs> a shame that we didn't uh get get back to jason uh but again very kind of him to offer uh, a q a session as well so uh everybody 
uh, on this call, we'll uh, be sure to get that link uh, when appropriate. So um, from my perspective, I, I do want to say on behalf of Zomato, uh, again, thank you to Amor, uh, Brad and Jason uh, for imparting valuable insights and inspiration on the topic of uh, restaurant branding for today's session. Uh, greatly appreciated. We'd normally hand you a, a physical certificate, but in lieu <laughs> of uh, a physical event, uh, we'll, we'll showcase some digital uh, appreciation certificates for your time. Uh, it's much, much appreciated. Uh, we're also very grateful uh, to our amazing moderators who will be with us all week, uh, my Sandico and Tony Bellaro for joining us and sharing your talents with us today. Uh, always fun the first one with any uh, technical, technical difficulties, um, but uh, it was relatively smooth. Um, so we appreciate and look forward to uh, spending a, a couple more opportunities uh, this week. I know uh, the Zomato community uh, have sent in lots of questions and we'll be engaging you guys throughout this week and beyond with uh, recordings of the session, uh, slides, uh, and further opportunities just to, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's got the silver bullet or the uh, the right answer to what's happening right now. I think the, the thing is to stay flexible, stay fluid, uh, and just learn as much as you can. Um, you know, trial and error will be a big thing we see over the next uh, weeks and months. Um, and, and the key is just to, to keep engaging um, and be ready for when restaurants can operate in some form again. Again, we don't know what that looks like and, and when that will happen. But uh, in the meantime, uh, utilizing some of Brad Amor's and Jason's advice in relation to staying uh, visible and, and communicating uh, and trying the, the different things that you can do right now, I think is, is the best uh, policy. So I, uh, I look forward to seeing everybody later in the week. Uh, you might wanna miss Friday's session because I think I actually have to speak for a little bit longer than I've had to today. So if you're going to miss any session, Friday, Friday session is the one to miss. Just joking. Yeah. <laughs> Looking again, forward Marcia. to that, Chris. I appreciate yeah. your time. And thank you for the appreciation. Uh, me and Tony so are very, very happy that we're part of your first digital event. And we know that restaurant is one of the hardest hit for COVID-19. And thank you for taking the initiative to come up with this kind of webinars. And thank you for giving us the insights, allowing us to listen to the best, best of the best, Amor, yeah. Maklang, Brad Geisler, and of course, Jason Cruz. Right, Tony? Yes, and we have a lot of positive responses on our live comments, you know, um, uh, in Somaro page and in Olearn. And there is a, there's a lot more to expect within the week. So uh, sabi nga ni Sir Jason, laban lang. And of course, kakapit lang din tayo. And stay fluid and stay focused, according to Chris. <laughs> and stay fashionable yes. also. And, and according to Mr. Moore. <laughs> yeah, according yeah, and according to Ms. Amor, now is the time to be present and relevant. Uh oh, I have a lot of takeaways, Tony. No, I hope nakapag take down notes, Karen. I really love listening yes, to I this guess. powerful guest, and this is the great <laughs> reset. It's a great reset, but this yeah. is an opportunity for us to, you know, find and discover our hidden talents. Ako, I'm in. I'm going to uh, be a Ano ba to? A chef na ba? Or a baker <laughs> soon? <laughs> a baker? And, yeah, me too. <laughs> and you know what? Diba? Yeah, and uh, during uh, this quarantine, they say that food is uh, the most essential part. I mean, the most essential, you know, good that we a good that we have, uh, uh, that we need. But this time, you know, having this webinar, we saw the other side of the food industry. And a lot of people are definitely interested, especially in this line of business. Yeah, and have, have you... Uh, Diba kanina pinishinare ni, ni Brad Geisler, Epicurean word. That's yeah. der deriving pleasure <laughs> from eating. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now during ECQ. And we hope also all the restaurants and the food business has learned a lot uh, from today's session. And I do hope that uh, we get to see you at sana umikli ng ating ECQ. And, and yes, pre uh, well, Tony, we have to end our uh, session. Uh, that concludes our day one. 
hashtag quarantine supporting the food industry in the time of crisis and we hope you had a lot of takeaway from today's webinar we thank our official partner of course e-learning partner olearn geyser maklang ada analytics data advertising esquire financing fueling dreams Hey Maya, Ankas, PMCM Events Management. Of course, Tony, thank you very much for joining me. And all our viewers via OLEARN and Zomato Facebook for joining us today. And everyone, please tune in again with us on Wednesday, May 6th. Our guest speaker is Mr. Rajan Utamshandani, the CEO of Esquire Financial, to talk about financing your restaurant during this trying time. So I believe everybody would be really, really interested about this. So don't forget to follow Zumaro on their Facebook page and on Instagram for more details. That's it, Tony. <laughs> this is my Sandico. Yeah. And again, this is Tony Bilaro. Everyone, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you. Have a good day and stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.